on Wikipedia. So that it gets archived and also people from anywhere in the world can access to the information if they want to learn about Goa. As we all go to Wikipedia if we want to know anything, you know, to learn. It's like almost like a Google to search. Also, and it's like a very difficult process to get your article up in a Wikipedia because once you put up the article, then there are a set of uh, gatekeepers, the Wikipedia editors, they will verify, they will check the your source and it comes back and forth, you know, you need to prove that it's relevant, it is good. So it's kind of a, uh, it's not an easy process and these guys have been doing this for a long time and they are also using Konkani language also, that's a great effort for Goa and India, Goan society. And uh, first I got to know about Tarmai Berra through Frederick, he's also the one of the Goa Wikipedia editors your editor <laughs> editor of the week editor of the week yeah he, he was, wow <laughs> that was uh, one year back long time back long time back long time back. <laughs> yes yeah so uh, i will give the mic to tanmay and also a little bit about tanmay he is a software engineer he works in bangalore now and i was reading about his grandfather general perera he was the Freedom fighter from Vasco. He was the first guy who uh, did a trade union in Goa. Yes, and from that family, I see a trace of Gerald Pereira in him because he's doing voluntarily all his work to you. Thank you. Guiding, so I'm just going to talk. 
but most of our history in Goa, if you have noticed, is oral. Um, we, you know, everyone knows a bit a lot about Goa. You talk to Goans, they always can tell you everything about themselves, about their families, about their village, you know, uh, about their their culture, so religion, uh, about their religion, about the practices they follow, everything. But not a lot of this is documented, right? It's not written anyway. So uh, if you attended last week's talk also, uh, it was about uh, how all the culture of Goa, but it was more about all the, everything that was spread orally. You know, how everyone knows these things only because uh, they, they talk to each other. But uh, that's the prop. that's kind of a problem, right? Because we know from history that oral histories are lost along the way. And uh, yeah, if I am, even in a small part, even in Goa, and if I am sitting in Vasco, so I am from Vasco. But if I am sitting in Vasco, I may not necessarily know everything about Ponje. Because unless I go and talk to some Ponjeka. But that's how oral history works, that it's only passed orally. And of course, it's not that like in Goa we don't know anything about each other. Goans have this, this interconnection, this need for connection. Right? So we, so even though I'm a Vastu car, I won't sit in Vastu and say, oh, I don't want to talk to that Ponjika. We will go out and you know, talk to a Ponjika, but okay, again, that's how we learn. And that's how even I as a Vastu car know a lot about Ponjika. But my point is that it's still oral history. It's not like a Ponjika has written it down and then I've read it in Vastu. It's just that, okay, because of this need for interconnection, that's how we are talking to each other and learning about each other. So there are a lot of topics and you know not just topics but you know our entire history to some extent is uh, very oral. Everyone knows about Goan culture and everything but it was only the Portuguese to some extent who documented their own history in Goa. So that's why the Portuguese history of Goa is covered uh, you know in a lot of great detail in a lot of books. Mostly in Portuguese obviously not in English, not in Goa. But the Portuguese history of Goa, as we know, is very detailed and that's what the most of the coverage uh, available, is available about. But if you want to go about pre-Portuguese history of Goa, there's always this question on all the online forums that I'm in. Uh, what, uh, what book will teach you about a pre-Portuguese history of Goa? So yeah, shameless self-plug in my grandfather's book. <laughs> covers the pre-Portuguese history of Goa. Uh, but yeah, uh, him and maybe only two or three other authors have written about the pre-Portuguese history of Goa. But that's, again, uh, as I said, not a lot of uh, written history about Goa before the Portuguese came. It's, everyone knows their own culture, but it's all work, very, very verbal. So yeah, again, that's what I was getting at. The other problem is that even though we now, you know, in today's day and age, there are a lot of books written about Goa and everything. You know, after liberation, people started writing. It's not digital because you know Goa was. It's still taking time. I won't say Goa was slow to the digital revolution. I'll let Frederick talk about that and how we were actually the first, one of the first three uh, states in India to get an internet connection. But yeah, it's just taking time to put all of our written history up digitally. So that's again a problem, right? Because today, everyone likes to go to the internet for information. Uh, not you know discounting books and libraries, but not everyone has the, um, you know, it's, they're just not easily accessible. Like if you are in a village in some, uh, in a, you know, in some corner of Goa, it's not easy to go to say Central Library in Ponji. Central Library in Ponji, by the way, has a really good collection of books. I have also visited there. Uh, they have a lot of books on history also. They have a rare book section also. So they have a lot of help also. So if you go there, they'll help you out with all that. But again, um, of course, they, they keep their books over there so you can't take them out because these are the rare books and all that. But uh, yeah. All of this stuff is not digitized. These books are, and the knowledge that is in these books is not digitally available. So that's another problem that we face. 
and uh, just on a bit of a side note, what happened is we wanted to get we as a tech community also. So Rico and I are both part of, as I said, the non-tech and tech community. So we as a tech community wanted Google Translate to happen in Kokani language. But again, when we went to Google and asked them, you know, you have done it for all other languages in India. So why not Kokani also? Because we are a recognized uh, language, right? We know that it got recognized in 1992 and all that. But uh, Google told us upfront that, you know, there's not a lot of digital content available in Kokani. And it was true. Uh, of course, this was back in 2005 or 6, so that time obviously a lot lesser than it is now. But again, there's a lot of content that wasn't digitally available and Google Translate simply their team, uh, of course from a perspective of knowing how many ones will actually use the tools, that is point number one, but point number two for them also to train their tool of Translate, they needed some content in digitally. So that's when we all came up with this idea that okay, you know, Wikipedia is a place where you can contribute yourself. And that's when we got the idea of say Kokani Wikipedia and all that, okay, if there is a Wikipedia in English, why can't we have it in Kokani? But yeah, uh, what kind of knowledge do we go and need to preserve anyway? So anyone, you all can raise your hands and just tell me. I think I mentioned some of it, like okay, I talked about already, uh, what did I, talk? I talked about culture of Goa, I talked about villages, I talked about religions, uh, what else? So I'm also using this as a you know, kind of trying to get ideas on what more we could work on Wikipedia. So that's why just uh, maybe an open forum for a bit. Sorry, Kazan system. system. Okay, I should note this down. Okay, Kazan system. Yes. Language definitely. Language. The so history of the language. History. history and it's also continuing both. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Personality. Personality. Uh, so again, there's different kind of personality. Anything specific. So I'll ask you why, because we realized very recently that theatrists are not covered. So theatre is a local form of theatre that we have here and there's not a lot of coverage on theatrists on Wikipedia. So that's why I'm asking any specific examples. Because I know a bit about hockey players. Hockey players, so sportsmen, yes, sports people of Goa. Uh, there's not a lot of uh, coverage, yes. Uh, the lips are this, I was not. There's not a lot of coverage. There were a lot more than just the lip service. Everyone only knows online that okay, the lip service was one of the sports people of Goa. But there were a lot more. There were a lot of women sports people also. Sorry? Vijayanagar, Adil Shankar. Yes, definitely. As I said, a lot, very little service. It's covered pre Portuguese history. So we. Even say, oh. Architecture. Everybody talks it's about this Portuguese going here and looking back. It's really interesting to see yes, continuity, yes. etc. But I never see that. Okay. And I think in sports, uh, more about sports and how it's been developed. And because uh, for me, who's just coming to work, uh, sports is a really important part of it. We want to sports, sport related. Farming. Farming, okay. Innovation in farming. Innovation in farming, okay, yeah. They living and dead artists. Living and dead artists. Interesting program, programs like Mok Sundays. Programs like Mok Sundays, yes. Good yes. Uh, Common people's perspective of all the major events that have happened here. Perspective? Uh, like all the major events that are always usually like talked about by official records, mm -hmm. which is obviously from a particular lens. Mm -hmm. uh, so common people's like, experience of what happened right now is a lot of uh, uh, dual liberation. Yes, then I was just going to say that, you know, you, I, I thought about it and yeah, even while doing a lot of work on Wikipedia, I realized that 
a lot of accounts of a lot of people we only get because of the common people's opinion, right? Because every government, as you know, even liberation and accession, that whole topic is itself a very contentious topic itself. And you know, the kind of leaders who were there were, came from different backgrounds. Like my grandfather was a communist, so no government will ever cover him <laughs> uh, as a freedom fighter. Sorry. Go and recipes. Go and recipes. Go and recipes. Food, yes. Maybe. I was thinking about the movies, um, rituals, festivals. Rituals and festivals. They actually don't be celebrated so much in the season. Mm. They make more vinegars. Oh, and those yes. those yes. the right food, the food here, the so that you cannot put it back. Yes. It's also, uh, what I found is uh, the thing of alternate medicine mm. is very high, which really seems to specialize in general, seems to specialize in one form. Know that. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Shameless self plug in again. My mom has written an article about that. She, uh, but again, my mother, uh, like last week's talk by Cyril, is uh, collecting oral histories. But yeah, that's why I thought about doing Wikipedia, which is more of written history. But yeah, uh, sorry. And what's alternate education? Okay. Like, There's a lot of that in Goa. There's a lot of homeschooling happening home here. There's uh, experiential learning happening in different ways. Okay. So it's an easier place to sort of come and try something. Yes. I think like uh, riddles and umani and tongue twisters. Oh, yes, yeah. And, yeah. and lullabies also. Lullabies also. Yes, yes. Yeah. There's a lot of. Uh, as I said, these are all oral cultures, yeah, yeah. so we, we raise our kids with these lullabies and all those stories and funny things, which are not always, you know, parliamentary, but you know, they are, they are, they are you know, things that teach kids some lesson, but yeah. yeah. The, uh, in Serendipity, I learned that there were lots of musicians, mm. uh, women and men, classical and all kinds of things. I think Rico for some time was obsessed with musicians. He tried uh, musicians and bands. Uh, someone else from our group tried with theatres. My current obsession is uh, freedom fighters, but I also tried movies and Kokani uh, films and uh, journalists and writers. Yeah. Ghost stories, ghost stories, yeah. Specific ghost stories. The spirits that guard the bridges. The spirit that guard the bridges. <laughs> like how we had, I think even uh, the whole of uh, the last week's talk by Mr. Sirius, which was about uh, you know all the local uh, legends and local, the you know the tribal practices of what that itself is a whole topic that is that we could cover. But yeah, I think uh, yeah anyone else. Actually. Yes, yes, songs and well, uh, you know, because of the, again, yeah, women are often ignored in all of this, right, because women were the ones making the songs because they were the ones who were cooking, I mean, traditionally, but not at the grinding store, yeah. And also craftspeople, artisans. Artisans. Yeah. About the, the geography and geology, Yes, definitely, because, uh, and that links to, again, the, the settlers of Goa and all of that, right? Because if you understand the geography and geology and paleontology, that will link to how you will like, understand more about the Gaudis and the original tribes of Goa. Or the migrants. Or the migrants also, yeah. It seems to be changing. I think the village histories also, there's been some books on specific villages. Specific villages. So thinking of Goa, I could also make a district or meet one particular village can do all of these all of these. Sorry? Tools. Uh, tools like in farming and tools or? Anything from farming to even the uh, you know, uh, modes of transport. Modes of transport, have, okay, yeah. You have like Goa Chitra has so many things there. Like the old car I mean, again Portuguese, but uh, 
car rates are not talked about often enough is what I feel. But yeah, uh, this is some of the stuff you have covered. Again, as I said, it's a work in progress and uh, definitely there's a lot more we can do. That's why I'm here taking ideas also. We recently worked on the Sanja Home Festival which, because you know it's a unique way of celebrating the feast of uh, St. John the Baptist, you know, across the whole world, I, from what I understand. But we have to correctly if I'm wrong, but this is the kind of stuff that we have been trying to cover. And of course, a lot more that maybe Rico can tell, but this is the stuff that I could remember off the top of my head. That uh, I think the last time we did a talk with Nilanpur, which was during the pandemic, um, we, we were really covering the villages and cultural practices of Goa because we felt that at least each village should have one Wikipedia article of its own and then we can go into the Nestor doll thing as uh, you mentioned. Right? After we make an article about each village then we'll start understanding the culture of each village and from there you know we can expand into the cultural part of Goa. But uh, then uh, the Goa liberation movement itself, uh, recently there were a few books written I think the late Valmiki Fajero also wrote a very nice book. Uh, but yeah, Goa Liberation Movement, I was just checking it out on Wikipedia, there is not a lot of coverage. Uh, it is only basic coverage on what happened, you know, the same basic stuff, everyone knows Portuguese came, right, sorry, Indian Army came, Portuguese out, same simple stuff. But you know, the, everyone wants to know how, why, all of that stuff also. Right? The freedom struggle also, all the different kind of uh, all the, the efforts that the people took, the freedom fighters took. Uh, food definitely, I think someone yeah, you had covered food and culinary practices. Uh, Goa has a lot of unique food with you know blends of both local and Portuguese cuisine and you know now fusion and that only influences of uh, festivals as I said, theatre and opening films. Theatre is again a very unique thing that uh, I think recently we saved one page of one theatrist from getting deleted because you know people sitting in America will feel like hey it's just a local form of theatre, what does it matter? But you know for us this was like a person who had won a um, lifetime achievement award in the field of theatre. So we were feeling that okay for us it's important. But they are saying hey no there's not enough reliable sources covering it, there's not enough books written about this person. There's just one Navin Times article and they are saying hey Navin Times it's just a local newspaper. For someone sitting in America, yes, because they will value something more like the, the New York Times or something, which they say has more uh, is more reliable than your Navin Times. But what I'm getting at is that for us in Goa, these small things are also. I mean, for from the global perspective, it may be small, but for us in Goa, this is a pretty big deal, right? Winning an award for it, a lifetime achievement award for. Theatre. So, uh, yeah, now coming to why Wikipedia is the choice that we took. Uh, so, these are the, again, okay, very simple, simplified version, but these are the main guiding principles that we uh, have on Wikipedia. Or rather, Wikipedia has and that we try to follow, which is that all the information should be verifiable using quote unquote reliable sources. I already talked about reliable sources that they don't necessarily consider Navin Times as reliable and I already mentioned that. But basically that the information should be verifiable. So if I say that okay, this person won the award, the lifetime achievement award in the Atra in 2017, there should be some way to verify that very statement. So if you go to any Wikipedia page which we will go through after the presentation, you will notice that every single line on Wikipedia has uh, an, a citation with it, a source attached to it. So every single line of on Wikipedia has this principle of verifiability that you know you can verify that at that source which is attached at a line, after that line that okay this information is verifiable, this information is actually factually correct. And secondly, yes, no original research, which means that okay, we can't put two and two together even though uh, we may know it's true. We have to stick to what the source says, so we can't modify what the source says. So just because um, a person, I mean, let, let me take the same example for simplicity. 
practicing just because a person won the uh, lifetime achievement award for theatre we can't say he is the greatest theatrist of all time right that's a, a completely different thing all together so we have to stick to the facts and the facts say okay he is he won the lifetime achievement award okay but we cannot you know go over and about that and make up things so even though i may feel that he is the best theatrist of all time I can't write that on Wikipedia. I can't make up things for other. I can't put in an opinion on Wikipedia. I have to stick to what the sources say. So this is, uh, in summary, one of the sorry, two of the guiding principles that we have on Wikipedia. Obviously, there are a lot more. Yeah. If you are saying that most of it is oral, then uh, how do you like source? The information. Like how so, um, it's still a problem is what helps say. We are trying to work on it. As I said, uh, when we were saving that article, we had only one or two Navindan sources to show. But definitely maybe we in Goa would know orally that that person as a theatrist is important to us. But, you know, it's English Wikipedia which is, you know, US dominated. Um, not saying that I have anything against the US, but I'm just trying to say that for people sitting halfway across the world, it doesn't make sense to them because they see just two tiny newspaper articles and they feel, and that's all that they can find about that person, right? But it's it's definitely a problem uh, and that is why our progress has been so slow. I have also been, I have been doing Wikipedia for seven years now, I think we Rico for six, 16, 17. <laughs> He's not counting. <laughs> but yeah, we go for a lot longer. But yeah, it's 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 a slow process even on our side because of the very question that you ask. It's, it's difficult, and especially in English, right? Because uh, as I said, they are sitting halfway across the world. If you put in a very big Marathi article as a source, they can't read it. So they will say, "Hey, it's in your." Again, they'll say, come up with the same argument. Right? Navin Dam is a local newspaper and a Marathi newspaper is even more local than a Navin Dam, right, or a Times of India. And uh, they definitely can't read it. So again, they start saying that, okay, if I can't read it, how can I verify the information? <laughs> so this Konkani Wikipedia work, uh, who are the editors? So we are the editors. So I'll come to it, but um, but since we brought it up, in summary, we are the editors and what we have been trying to do is uh, you know, to stick to these principles. What we do is first create, uh, I started doing it, I started creating content on English and my written company is not so great because I studied in a CPSC school, so uh, other people used to help me with the translation into Google. But I'll get to that in a minute. Who is that in the people? Like so there are a team, as I think Nilankur also mentioned, right, that it's, um, there are administrators of Wikipedia, there are moderate, and who kind of do the work of moderation. You can call them as moderators, because they they also try to stick to these guiding principles, as I said. Uh, but administrators and uh, Wikipedia itself has a larger team above it called the Wikimedia Foundation. WMF and uh, so I mean I don't blame anyone they are obviously trying to do their job because it's a very valid point that they say right? that if I have put a Marathi newspaper source it's not verifiable and they are just trying to say that okay every information on Wikipedia should be verifiable but for what uh, but you know it's, it's that a bit of a loop that we try to say okay it's in Marathi, we can read it, it's there. So what I tried doing then a little bit is to uh, give a Mar an English translation of the Marathi text, but again, if it's a big long article, there's only so much that you can do it. But uh, to answer your question specifically, yes, uh, there are administrators, there are moderators, and since most of English Wikipedia users are from uh, English-dominated countries in uh, the Americas and Europe, uh, that's where the moderation comes from. Mm -hmm. So it's a Google translation of the Rocky article saying, look, this is the hospital.